Alright, this is Earth Reborn. Before setup, we are doing the scenario auto-generating system, also known as SAGS. <laughs> and I'm with Virtuous Heretic, also known as Mike, also Sun known Bro as Virtuous for Heretic, Sorry. also known as Sunbro for Life. And we also have Jufro Man, <laughs> also known as your host, Trinant, and probably Aubrey as well. At some point I'm going to cut you out and say your name. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Earth Reborn is an amazing game. It is definitely, at least has been my favorite game, although I have not played it in a long enough time. Will it hold up to the test of moderate time? <laughs> moderate time. It so, is not a simple game. No. This is the uh, your little DM screen for this game, and that's all the sub rules you can have. The game does a very good job... I sound like I've been smoking since I was four. The game does a very good job of explaining all these rules in ten scenario campaigns, adding bit by bit, piece by piece, until you have the entire game at which you can play the auto-generating system, um, which is what we're about to do. Which now. is this thing. So the reason you don't see a board here is because we are going to piece it together with all of these little pieces here such as this thing, and they're double-sided so we can put different sides on them, outdoor and indoor. So you pick a group and the other player picks a group and you go back and forth placing pieces. So it's procedurally generated, but it's also competing against each other to set up the board in a position that is advantageous to your side. Because one player's side comes in through the outdoor and one player's side comes in indoors. Uh, there are two factions here. There are the Salemites, which are zombies, basically, and then there's the NORAD, which are military. Zombies versus military. How fun. And the military has a mech. There's a mech. <laughs> there's always a mech. There is always um, a mech. What is important about uh, this part of the game, or at least for me, is that I am utterly confused at what to do every single time. Not because it's confusing, but because you, you're, you're given mission cards which give you an objective, like uh, this is activate the time bomb in the robot assembly workshop. Now the only way you would be able to get this objective is if you actually pull the piece up, I have no idea where it is by the way, um, the robot assembly workshop. And in the case, in that case, because this is an objective, your opponent may want to just turn it into a space that means nothing. Now as Aubrey said about deployment, you're dealing with ones on inside, ones on the outside, but it's important to add these objectives. So you want, if you're coming in from the outside, for some of the objectives to be accessible. And if mm. you're the player defending the inside, some, in some ways you want to try to lay out the map where they can't easily get in. Mm -hmm. Now, to offset this, to make strategy even more strategic, uh, the NORAD, which I'm playing, uh, the military have drillers. And you mm -hmm. can either put a decoy in them or one of your active units. And they will literally just pop out in the middle of nowhere. They'll drill inside even though they may be blocked in all sides by walls. You can just drill up in there and have a mech blow down walls. And yes, there is geomorphic terrain in this game, as far as a board game is concerned. So, so I think uh, that's enough for now. We'll go back to this after we finish setting up and then yep. some t and do some in between turns. So, all right. Okay, we have finished the scenario setup for Earth Reborn for the SAGS SAGS. <laughs> you should be. What? What? So the NORAD gets to deploy outside and where driller tiles are. That big miniature there, the mech, is deployed in a driller tile. Right next to Jeff Dealer, the zombie lover in more ways than one. And Hollister, the commando, and then, uh, and then we have the other characters kind of bordering on the outside doors. Vasquez and Nick are next to each other and are probably going to head inside somewhere. I have three of my characters bunched up together. I may or may not be trying to make zombies. Maybe. Maybe. Possibly. And... 
strangely enough, in this scenario, I chose both traitor characters, and usually this turns out very, pretty badly for me because the traitors are one of them's useful in as long as you don't tr uh, mess up, but one of them is very hard for me to manage, and I just wanted to give him a shot this time. Cherokee Bill, the Cherokee Bill is weird in that the Noride player can activate him, and it's a little tricky. We'll see. Oops. We'll zoom in. in. Not much to say other than that. Well, I would like to say that this has been brought in part by Bell's Hop Slam. Any shaky camera footage slash uh, nonsensical words that come out of our mouths. That and bourbon, because I, I must have that to live. Um, mm. I, one of the things that's interesting about this game in general is you get these mission cards for your objectives. And sometimes you, I mean, you literally can get things that are impossible, but they get reshuffled. But sometimes you'll get stuff that's very, very hard. And I think that's what's interesting for me is mm -hmm. I'm sitting on a 50-50 right now. I can get half the points fairly easy, but I don't think I can get the other half the points fairly easy. So mm. it'll be an interesting, I think on that case, it'll be an interesting game. As long as Tremont or Aubrey uh, actually got objectives he can complete. Because it is a victory point based game. Um, right. The game is going to be played over six turns. Each turn is comprised of multiple little action rounds where we play order tiles from behind our screens onto characters. The order tiles have several orders on them and we can execute the orders. So after six turns on this little turn track, see that little timer at the zero spot? That will, the game will end and we count up our mission points completed by objectives and see who won. That's about it. So we will begin. Alright, this is the end of turn one in Earth Reborn. Scenario auto-generated scenario. So that was kind of redundant. <laughs> now, we had kind of an exciting first turn here. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's ever been this bloody of a first turn ever. I mean, there's the scenario, Cherokee Bill almost got killed, but every single one of my characters got injured. Mm. Now, on a positive note for me, I did actually complete one of the mission objectives. The zombie mm -hmm. lab is no more. Um, but everyone did get hurt in the struggle. Now, some characters have significantly more health than each other, but uh, I'm hurting. Um, mm -hmm. However, mission points are what wins the game. And Without, so far, I'm at 5, he's at 15, 15 14. 14. Yeah, um, it's not look, I'm going to have to start winning something. There's, there's a lot of interesting stuff that's going down right now. It is currently turn 2. Um, just... I mean, we have two direct face-offs with uh, Bolter and Jack Saw and James Wu and, uh, what's that dumbass's name? Jeff Dealer. Thank you. Jeff Dealer and James Wu, and Jeff Dealer has a shotgun. Jack Saw, Nick Bolter, Jack Saw has titanium claws, Nick Bolter has a flamethrower, so, which yeah. can also hit. Um, I, yeah, I've also hit Kendall once uh, yeah. with that. Um, Indirectly... You probably should have actually destroyed the morgue with that. The mech has shot Hollister, but not for much. Hollister has shot the mech, but not for much. Vasquez is probably in the worst shape of all of them, except for my own guy, Cherokee Bill, the traitor character over here, who is the only character on the wounded side. And almost dead. So, we'll see how this goes after... A uh, few more turns. Indeed. Indeed. This is turn four, beginning of turn four of Earth Reborn with a bourbon and Diet Coke. And a I would have normal popsicle. Coke, but you don't have any. I know. I'm trying to get thinner because I'm a fatty. <laughs> What can you expect? I play board games. Of course I'm fat and have oh, a neck beard. Oh, oh, oh. So, what we have now is a situation. A situation. I have lost poor Cherokee Bill. He finally kicked the bucket. The traitor he was. The autistic traitor he was. Um, he was autistic, you know. You killed a disabled man. With a mech. There's no kill like overkill. The mech there pretty much is standing on the corpse of Cherokee Bill. Actually, literally, he is standing on the corpse of Cherokee Bill. Oh, we removed the token. We removed the token. Technically, there was a corpse there. Uh, why did you remove the token? I don't know. 
one of my objectives that I keep showing is occupying the armory at the end of each turn, which I'm doing. This mech is coming for me. His objective that may or may not be, he destroyed a zombie lab and that got him points. I captured Vasquez for a while and then they captured the zombie I was capturing. And I think there's at least some objectives he's getting right now that are going to score him some points. Uh, it comes down to a matter of attrition at this point. Can I score points enough each turn with the VPs that I get to outbeat his mega scoring points? Or is it just going to end up um, being that he outscores me to the point where I can't possibly win? I will concede if that happens, but I think we're going to have to play this out through the next three turns to really see what happens. Any thoughts, Mike? Um, one of the things that is said, there's a lot of posturing in this game. You pretend that because, particularly in a one-on-one, -on -one, you pretend you're in a bad situation when you're not. Mm. Um, Aubrey did make a mistake with, or Trinault did make a mistake with giving me Frank Einstein. However, th there are other, th the unfortunate thing that happens is you give your people items that are useful for your faction but your, the oppo opponent may or may not have a victory condition on that item. Or on the back of the item, even worse. Yeah. The, the All of the oh. equipment in the game is double-sided, so if you want to get rid of... And there's not really an easy way to get rid of so, items. So, for example, if you had a time bomb that you needed to blow up on a certain space, and it happened to be a power fist that you had on one of your characters, <laughs> you, couldn't do, you couldn't do anything about it. Um, yeah. That's not one of my victory conditions, so I'm not upset in any way. Like, uh, this is all, again, just posturing. Mm. Um, however, as he said, it is a matter of attrition. Uh, I think I'm about to score a lot of points. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But the problem is, is at that point, I'm going to run out of things I can score points with. It Whereas, comes a matter of, at the same time, he has a pretty significant lead on me. Well, not that significant. No, I don't have a significant lead at the moment, but... It, it's like you have looked at some of my objective cards and may or may not know what they are. Yeah. So that's a big thing. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, end of turn three, beginning of turn four. We last recorded three turns ago. What happened was... What did happen was... That attrition thing? Yeah, that happened. He scored his points... And I nearly made it through the um, to uh, win, but as you see right there, I am f three, four points behind, and I would have won by one point. Could I have activated a special ability of Kindle's item, the laptop, which would have scored me four points if I got lucky and rolled nine on and succeeded a test to activate it? Game for me, but. As it stands, it was a really close game, a really good game of Earth Reborn, I feel. Yeah. So both two of our mission cards were kind of hard to complete because we had to find the cards that were on the back of other players' equipment. So um, we have to kill the players and then search for them. Yeah, go ahead and show them. So, so for instance... Thing. I had the Power Fist equipped on Frank Einstein. And he had a time bomb yeah, that he needed on the back the of it. the time bomb. And his was activate a time bomb to blow up the Robot Assembly Workshop. So it was a valid thing, but the problem is, is that you can't really shed the equipment, so you end up with a null and void card. Yeah. Now, the same thing happened to him, and I also got Vasquez out of there, so that that happened to you as well. But yeah. you didn't make any more zombies, so it wasn't... I wasn't possible. going to make more zombies well, after, after that. Well, after I scored the first one, you weren't going to. No sane human being would give their opponent free points. Exactly. It was now, still neck and neck. I was... I was really scared that you were going to go after Kendall and kill him and steal my laptop, which would have lost me 10 points. Yeah. But as it stands, you didn't guess, guess that, so I was happy. Uh, any other things that we missed in terms of what happens? Um, I mean, we both made mistakes. Um, yeah. We both put people... It, the thing about this game is that, partially because the missions are hidden, if you miss a single... If you make one bad mistake, you can really mess up your chances of winning, mm. per se. However, on the other hand, you can accidentally do very well. Um, overall, I'd say, I think the, I don't think either of us made bad choices on equipment, on placement. Um, we, every bad choice was made in the plane of the game. Yeah. I like the map. There's been a couple times where I've done poorly on the map. I think you and me did good on the map. Yeah, the map went well. 
because we had good placement, we, and both of us were in good spots, and it led for a very close match as a result. Yeah. Yes, if you play your map poorly, you can lose, be losing very, very quickly, just straight out at the beginning of the game. And we've had matches where we had to concede early on just because of that. Well, it, it stacks with the the fact that the uh, the element the, the he's preferring to a particular match where I put the mech next to Hollister, who's the only person of that would be this lady with yes. the cards over there. She's really the only person on their team that can carry the bazooka, which yeah. is super effective against the mech. Well, I put the two of them together when it had the bazooka. He had the mech next to the person who could kill it, and I had the objective to kill the mech. And I had the objective to steal the thing he had oh, with the I mech. Oh, yeah, I did forget about that part of the story. And uh, so I ran out with it, and by the time... So I had, like, a 20-point lead on turn one or something like that. I think like it's that. 15 plus 10, so it was 25 points turn one. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> that pretty much... Like, he was like, yeah, I concede. Uh, we're done there, here. Which is fine. This is a game to concede in sometimes, but so is Go, for crying out loud. I'm not saying this is... <laughs> This is a game that's as immensely as tactical, but it really does have a huge amount of strategy going on, as well as kind of a, you know, it has crazy dice rolling as well, but it does so in a way that's very thematic and fun. These, and these are the dice... most evil dice. And I, I, this is coming from a D&D &D player and stuff, like, I hate these dice. I'm a notoriously bad dice roller, but... They amplify they, it. They I roll decently on you. them, but man, yeah. yeah. Blank. Yeah, I'm actually getting decent rolls. Not that no, you're getting decent rolls roll. now. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was 50-50. That was actually almost statistically accurate. Holy hell. So, why don't we talk about our opinions of the game in general? Starting and, with you. Um, as I said at the, the beginning, uh, the tutorial missions literally like spoon food... Uh, spoon, blah, 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 just tell you bit by bit how to play. Programmed Thank instruction you. is the official term um, for it when they do that. But it's done really really well so none of the mechanics are insane it's just there are this many so but when you introduce stuff one by one by one by one you end up being able to understand the game and it's really a rewarding experience and you yes. can and as a result of having so many mechanics you can come behind to win or you can keep keep a lead like you mm -hmm. you have to outplay each other and i want to note that the tutorial missions aren't throwaways either like they're cool you can play them at least half a dozen times and not get bored with them i except, feel except for the first one first one no i've played the first one i d i don't agree with that just all the only mechanics you learn are movement and melee and like some characters that i mean if you're a tiny little you know five 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 woman <laughs> that weighs 120 pounds soaking wet. I don't really see how she goes up against a guy soaking wet with a chainsaw. Well, a she, chainsaw she doesn't. She arm. she has um, Ein Frank Frankenstein going yeah, with her. True. It, it's a, it's it's a cute little beginning scenario. It it, is. It's, it's not. Intense. I mean, it's not bad. It's just I personally don't want to replay it again. But now we're just going into people who've been drinking and playing a board game for six hours. Yeah. Actually, um, this is actually my. Two dozenth play of this game. Um, That's an interesting. I've record. played twenty four times now, and it is so. Which may not sound like much, but for board games these days, playing a you know a game five times is for me is like a decent amount. This is my most played game, surprisingly, of my new stuff. Um, it's does that include Dominion? <laughs> I, I haven't counted Dominion in a yeah, while. I don't. I don't know if it'd be you'd be able to count Dominion. I mean, it's a th it's not a throwaway game. It's it's thirty minutes, you know, yeah. versus how many sessions is that? Yeah. <laughs> this. Oh hell. Radio um, scrambling. Radio yeah. scrambling. So, it's my. It, it was my favorite game. I wrote an extensive review. It. it still is my favorite game. I think it's just. I don't know what makes it my favorite game though. I think, the strategy the. It's not, but it's not just strategy, or else I'd go with Dungeon Twister on that, which was my favorite game for a while. Just a chess with a little bit of thematic taste. This is a deeply complex game with a lot of theme and a lot of content, and all the content is very clever, and all of that adds up. It, it's not one particular thing, it's an amalgamation of just 
clever, el well, I don't know if it's elegant. Yeah, it's actually pretty elegant design. Yeah, too. it's it's it 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 does hold up to a lot of other games. I don't. I've read various things online about the game, and I don't see how you could not like it. Um, you need to play it. You need to play through the whole tutorial. There's no way you can... This is not a game you can go into, oh, let's play the real game. I mean, this is like 1830. No human being should play the real game the first time around. You know? um, I think, uh, I think there are some extraordinary people who can go around into the full game. Some really heavy board gamers, but... Yeah, for new guys... A of cocaine. For new guys... Play the tutorials. Play at least some of the tutorials. Skip you, to you two. can skip, skip to two. Yeah, skip skip to the second one maybe. Well, the first one's okay. The first one is okay. I, it's it, okay it, when it, you start out and then you go back to it and you're like, man, this is boring. I love. Yeah. I need the. I need the time bombs and the landmines. I'm not. I'm not exaggerating. There, there are time bombs and landmines in this game. I didn't get my time well, we have one minute left, so I'll just conclude and say this is still my favorite game. I'm glad I'm. I have it. I'm glad I'm played it again. And I'm glad I could be a part of it. Yes. So no, but seriously, it's a great game. Go out and buy it. It's more like thirty dollars on eBay. Right now. Used. Right. Some of them even paint the middle. Yep. All right. Well, that's it. For now.